Kohli moment. So who were the Kohlis? Now also we will uh, we will find uh, here and there mention of the Kohlis. So they are an indigenous community inhibiting in coastal regions of Maharashtra, Gujarat, and the parts of Rajasthan. So now also these Kohlis are there in the Mumbai coast and the surrounding areas of the Mumbai coast. So their major activity is fishing. They are dependent or they are they lead their lives by fishing. Right. So against whom they rebel? Right. So they primarily resisted the dominance of various empires and the rulers uh, throughout history, including the Mughals, Marathas, and later the British East India Company also. Good evening students, welcome back to Pluto Science. Right. Today is our 67th day. Okay. And today we are studying up the studying the tribal uprisings. So you know uh, when we study the modern India, especially the period of uh, freedom struggle or the national movement, the response to British rule or British oppression, if you want to uh, call it like that so the response came uh, from various sections uh, almost all the sections which are uh, directly and indirectly impacted by the british rule so broadly we can divide that response into three categories one is the response fr from the tribals second we can uh, divide the response as civilian civilian response and lastly the agrarian response or we can say peasant response also we can call it as so the tribals among these uh, responses apart from that broadly other uh, we can say uh, revolts against the British are there like the 1857 1857 revol revolts itself revolt itself apart from that uh, there is a Tebaga movement so some uh, historians put this in the uh, category of agrarian movement only so even if we remove Tebaga, Tebaga movement uh, there is a Telangana Telangana movement or better to call it Telangana rebellion or Telangana armed struggle to call it exactly Telangana armed struggle All right so here we can't say they are actually uh, civilians completely divide them the movement into either civilian movement or pe peasant movement etc basically uh, the we can say entire population of the rural villages of the Telangana especially some districts are there districts like Varangal, Karimnagar, Kamam etc so people have rebelled against the uh, tyrannical rule of Nizam of uh, that time, Nizam of Hyderabad. However, they are actively supported. The movement is actively supported by communists. Communists have actually guided and we can say they have provided leadership for the movement, Telangana movement. Uh, the movement is known as the Telangana Armed Struggle, right? So, like this, there are some other movements uh, which, uh, I mean, which which cannot we cannot put them uh, in them any uh, particular category. So, if time permits, we will also try to study those movements. So, apart from that, uh, I was mentioning. So, broadly, we can divide the movements into three categories: uh, tribal uprisings or tribal movements civilian uprisings and agrarian or peasant movements right so these movements can further be divided broadly uh, before 1857 revolts, uh, revolts and after 1857 revolts so there is a broad categorization uh, in this way also movements happened before the 1857 revolt and movements after the 1857 revolt right 
so this is a brief introduction about the movements or we can say response uh, to the tyrannical british rule so here also one more point is that the tribals among all these responses the tribals they were the first to take arms first to take arms against the uh, tyrannical rule or we can say exploitative rule of britishers in india so they were the first community to take arms against the british rule in india right so this is a prominent point you have to remember right so first in this lecture we will briefly understand the reasons uh, common reasons for the tribal uprisings and uh, after that we will see some prominent tribal movements that have occurred in the uh, during the british india period right so broadly we will see the reasons for the tribal uh, tribal uprisings then we will see the some of the important individual tribal uprisings in india so broadly the reasons are la loss of land and resources so what uh, britishers have tried to do is they wanted to extract revenue from as many channels as possible so they wanted to commodify everything they want they have seen first they have started taxing the lands agriculture agricultural lands and they have stack uh, they have started uh, taxing anything that is coming in, into their mind so in this way they have also seen the forest as a good source to collect the tax so first what they have done is they have brought a series of laws through that they have declared the forest as the state property they have uh, declared uh, declared the forest as the state property right so then once they have declared the uh, forest as a state property so because it is a state property the obviously the tribal people are living in the forest and they uh, depend on the forest and the forest resources for their livelihood they collect fruits they collect the roots they collect the leaves they collect uh, leaves and many other forest products are there they collect resources from the forest so when tribal people collect the forest resources the britishers try to impose tax on those resource collection so this is the major contention point so in a way it is injustice also to the tribals because uh, before the britishers came to india it was the tribals who were freely using the i mean freely residing or we can say it's not free there is a good bond between the tribal people and the forest so for centuries together they were living they were living within the forest and there is a very good uh, we can say sustainable relationship in ship between the tribals and the forest so not only they were dependent on the uh, forest area or the forest but they are also playing a role by conserving it so in this way there is a good relationship between the tribals and the forest people and suddenly these foreigners are coming and these outsiders are coming and they are saying that no this is our property and you have to pay tax to utilize this uh, i mean this property whatever that is forest or forest resources right so in this way their livelihood centuries old livelihood has been kind of taken away so with this the tribals have been aggrieved very much apart from that they were also there are also several restrictions there have been also several restrictions imposed on the movement of the tribals in the forest right so all this if you see there are interference in the way of life of the tribal people suddenly some outsider is appearing and he is a, he is saying that you should not venture into forest you should not collect the resources from the forest etc so these kind of restrictions are have come suddenly so this uh, we can say uh, somewhat dissolutionizes the tribal people i mean the tribals got angry so this is one reason next is exploitation right so uh, next thing is because of the uh, foreigners uh, sorry because of the britishers their entry into india and somehow 
they wanted to expand their reach and they want to tax as many areas as possible so the uh, i mean so, i mean the imperialist machinery imperialist machinery like police and other authorities including and so, i mean along with that uh, at the end the money lenders money lenders they have also come and they have reached the tribal areas so money lenders you know they are known for their exploit exploitative measures they will lend the money and they extract is exorbitant interest rates so when the people are not in a position to pay the uh, loans they are taken uh, because of the whatever may be the reason one major reason is they ta i mean <coughs> they collect the interest at a very high rates so whenever the people are not in a position to pay repay the loans taken by them they will uh, means they will <coughs> take over whatever the property that is there at the disposal of that uh, uh, people who have taken the loans so in this way whatever the meager land resources uh, these uh, people have tribal people had they have been confiscated by the money lenders so in this way there is a peculiar i mean all these uh, we can say the machinery of the colonial uh, rulers that has somehow entered the lives and livelihoods of the tribal people and they have disturbed the way of life of the tribal people so this is the second reason next is disruption of traditional way of life so we have already discussed elaborately about it so somehow the lifestyle of the tribal people which was uh, known for sustainability which uh, which was a peaceful uh, kind of life uh, with no involvement of lending etc so when money lender is there they won't uh, i mean there is no way that they can uh, take money uh, as a borrowing so in this way somehow their traditional way of life has been disturbed uh, one more thing is they used to freely uh, roam in the forest so it is their part and parcel of life it is their lifestyle lifestyle they need large areas area forest areas to roam so in this way the britishers when the britishers came and put restrictions on the movement in the forest this is also somewhat troubled them apart from that one more thing is there uh, the tribal people have practiced uh, had certain practices like female infanticide etc though they are not desirable uh, they are not desirable so the british what they have done is they have brought in some acts that uh, female fe infanticide cannot be done uh, etc so especially uh, in the previous classes also i was telling uh, especially people in the odisha region they were practicing some uh, we can say uh, from today's standards even uh, from on that day standard also they are uh, not acceptable but however uh the british government or the british authorities were trying to prevent uh, people from doing tribal people from doing uh, those kind of uh, things like uh, female infanticide etc so they brought in some acts uh, and people who are resorting to those practices they have been uh, punished so uh, though they are desirable only they have brought in with uh, i mean they are brought in not in consensus with the tribal people so there is no uh, consensus from the tribal people for these acts so they also thought that these acts are uh, interference in the their in, interference in the way of life of the tribal people right cultural classes so the british attempts to uh, impose their cultural na norms on the tribals uh, by way of you uh, you will know Uh, by introducing english education english education and uh, religious uh, practices especially i think through the 18 uh, 13 charter act or 1833 charter act the uh, the uh, religious uh, re religious organizations uh, those i mean which preach christianity which preach uh, christianity they have been allowed into india so those missionaries uh, christian missionaries they have reached interior tribal areas 
and they have started convert converting people into christianity so this also become a point to fight uh, i mean between the tribals and the british authorities so apart from that uh, this is the major point discontent with the british rule so they do not accept the british rule itself because they thought the britishers are outsiders and they do not have any right to rule over them so these are the major reasons apart from that i have told the impact of the outsiders it is also very very important the interference of outsiders has also become so outsiders are money lenders money lenders the uh, merchants merchants or tradesmen all of them have started coming into interior parts of the tribal areas so these also i mean they are known for their ex exploitative ways so this all this also angered the tribal people so the first target were of the tribal movements was these uh, these the i mean the colonial agents i mean who have come because of the british rule the traders and the money lenders first the tribal people have targeted them and the next level uh, they have targeted the british authorities itself the uh, police uh, the british police system right so these are the some of the reasons major reasons only i have discussed apart from that individual tribal groups uh, who have resorted to revolt against the british they have their own separate peculiar reasons also we will try to see those reasons also right so broadly uh, we can divide the tribal uprisings into two or three categories so first uh, category is early 18th century to mid 19th century movements so mid 19th century means till eight, uh, till 1857 right so those movements are uh, movements at that time were bills bills have revolted kols santhals mundas and koyas all these tribal groups have revolted during this time next is uh, between 189 uh, sorry uh, late 19th century uh, it is during the <coughs> 1870s or uh, we can say 1875 to 1900 so uh, here uprisings like birsa munda munda uh, munda rebellion uh, so this is the major movement at that time apart from that early 20th century we will see some of the famous uh, movements like rampa rebellion so it ha happened in the coastal andhra pradesh present day coastal andhra pradesh region and uh, it is led by alluri sita ramaraju and other uh, movements are also there like uh, koya movement etc so we will study about these movements in detail so broadly these movements uh, movements can be divided into these three categories or broadly we can divide the movements into easily before 1857 uh, movements and after 1857 the movements so this classification is more and more comfortable so you can follow this classification right right so this is the brief introduction about the movement uh, and uh, now we will see the individual movements and uh, some specific uh, issues or we can say features about that particular movements right first uprising is bill uprising it happened between 1818 and 1831 right so uh, the bill is the uh, present day maharashtra the bills were there in the present day maharashtra in the especially in the khandesh region right so uh, they have had a they have led a series of rebellions series of rebellions uh, have been led by them against the uh, british uh, british rule in india newly established british rule in india right so reasons particular reasons when it comes to this particular tribe bill tribe loss of autonomy and the trading rights this is one particular reason right so the british took over uh, take over disrupted the self governing way of the uh, bills and uh, self life uh, self governing way of life and control over their ancestral lands has also been disturbed by the british rule right the new forest laws uh, which uh, which i was mentioning earlier they have also restricted 
their access to resources forest resources and also the activities like hunting gathering and grazing these all have been affected right next is exploitation and taxation so the british have imposed a new taxes we have also discussed this and they have uh, adapted exploitative practices by land uh, landlords leading to economic hardship for the bills right apart from that cultural clashes also there the especially the activities of the christian monasteries uh, sorry christian missionaries so they have also tried to preach christianity and convert tribal people into christianity this has led to cultural conflict right these are the major reasons when it comes to bills uprising so uh, course of the uprising if you see it erupted in 1818 and after soon after the british occupied khandesh regions right so some of the leaders of the movement were sevaram uh, under the leadership of sevaram they have resorted to guerrilla warfare tactic tactics launching surprise attacks on british troops etc right so this uh, movement continued uh, intermittently i mean in spells till until a decade right <clears throat> till a decade uh, major phases in that are 1818 to 19 1825 and 1831 right so this is these are some details about the uh, bill movement so what is the outcome of this movement so the movement was eventually surprised by the mighty british force deploying a superior military power however the prolonged resistance uh, forced by the british to uh, to negotiate a partial settlement in some areas right this settlement included concessions on taxation and some recognition of traditional forest rights for the bells so this is the outcome right so when you study the tribal movements try to keep an eye on the outcome of outcome of the movement also so in most of the uh, revolts especially the civilian and agrarian revolts which we are going to study tomorrow so the there was there was a solution brought up by the britishers like they have made an act uh, to uh, the alleviate the suffering of the people the reason because of which main reason because of particular reason the civilians or the agrarian or sorry the peasants or for that matter the tribals were uh, uh, i mean they were uh, uprising against the britishers so to uh, address that issue they were bringing some reforms some measures or some act also sometimes they have brought in so keep an eye on the outcome also because uh, in the previous questions the focus was also on these areas what was the outcome of that particular rebellion etc right so this is the outcome of this bill uh, bill uprising uh, the i mean there were some uh, i mean freedom in the or we can say uh taxation there was some leverage in the taxation and also some traditional rights of the bills have been recognized on the forest this is the outcome next is the ramoji uprising so majorly it occurred in an around 1820s but one more uprising we will see during 1870s also right so uh, ramosi is a uh, region also in maharashtra especially the western ghats region of maharashtra right so these people are also ramosi people were also one of the first and four i mean one of the first and foremost uh, tribal communities which took arms against the british rule uh, if you see the uh, peculiar or particular reasons for uh, the up- uprising of the ramosis first thing is loss of livelihood so ramosis traditionally they were employed in maratha army and police faced unemployment and economic hardship after the british takeover all right land revenue so british uh, the uh, british uh, have introduced harsh land revenue policies and the collection methods they have also burdened the ramosis famine so apart from that a acute famine has occurred so this further fueled the resentment so especially in the pune region you know 
during the british rule yesterday also i have mentioned the famine was a famine was a frequent occurrence in the british india because their major focus on uh, uh, was on exploitation of the resources so and uh, tax collection but however they were not that much bothered about the welfare of the people so because of this reason people frequently suffered the shortage of food etc and uh, because of that we will see many number of famine famines uh, during the british rule in india so apart from that discontent uh, discontentment with the british rule so this is also one of the other reasons so leaders and course of events if you see the 1822 uprising it was led by chittur singh uh, the ramoses under his uh, leadership chittur singh they have re revolted against the oppressive land revenue assessments in satara district right so they have people uh, in this regions they have plundered the regions surrounding satara and attacked forts all right next uprising is between 1825 and 26 so this happened under the leadership of uma ji nayak and bapu trimbak ji savant right so under their leadership the ramoji is rebelled against uh, rebelled again against the british due to this time due to famine and depo, uh, deposition of a pop popular local leader raja pratap singh of satara so these two are the major reasons at that time right so suppression uh, with their might the british were able to suppress this uh, rebellion also however uh, uh, in 1831 uma ji nayak was captured and executed right so uh, at the end we can say the people had to uh, surrender and withdraw the movement so this is about the ramosi movement right uh, next movement is the koli movement so who were the kolis now also we will uh, we will find uh, here and there mention of the kolis so they are an indigenous community inhabiting in coastal regions of maharashtra gujarat and the parts of rajasthan so now also these coolies are there in the mumbai coast and the surrounding areas of the mumbai coast so their major activity is fishing they are dependent or they are they lead their lives by fishing right so against whom they rebel right so they primarily resisted the dominance of various empires and the rulers uh, throughout history including the mughals marathas and later the british east india company also so they it is they it is in their culture that they don't accept the outside rule whether it whether it may be mughals or whether it may be british east india company also right so uh, we will see a series of coal rebellion coli rebellions uh, i mean they have uh, revolted uh throughout the centuries like 16th and 17th century 18th century also you will see and between 1820s and uh, 1840s also you will see the especially this uh during this period you will see the uh, uprising against the uh british east india company and the britishers especially uh british uh, british india company their rebellion is noteworthy apart from that you will also see the revolts in 16th and 17th century and especially in the 18th, uh, 18th century they have rebelled against uh, maratha rule so the reasons for their uprising are land alienation so because of the series of new laws that have been brought by the britishers and east india company next is restrictions on fishing and salt production so earlier also i have mentioned their major livelihood activity is fishing so apart from that they were producing salt also you know very well the british have tried to find each and every opportunity any opportunity to collect the tax so they have also restricted the salt production by this community right next is general discontent with the british rule so these two are the specific reasons and apart from that there is a general discontent also right. so course so the kohli uprisings they involved guerrilla warfare 
uh, they attack the british outposts and uh, they have also disrupted the tax collection however uh, at the end the british were to suppress this uprising also so this is the story of the kohli uprising next is kohl rebellion so do not confuse with kohli and kohl so that is different and this is different right. so kohls were there in the uh, the eastern part of the country especially parts of the jharkhand odisha west bengal and chatisgarh some parts of the present day chatisgarh so they were kohls were kohls were in the uh, eastern part of the country whereas kohls they were at the western uh, western part of the country so this coal rebellion took place between 1831 and 1832 right so especially they were living in the chota nagpur plateau in the eastern part of the country so reasons if we see land dip, uh, disposition so because of the uh, rules new laws and the rules brought in by the british government the land has been alienated by the uh, alienated by the uh, la- they have lost their rights over the land right so the british have implemented new land re- land tenure system that disrupted traditional tribal ownership practices right so outsiders like landlords and money lenders they began began acquiring tribal lands leading to alienation and loss of livelihood for the coals so this has happened because of the new land policies new ra- land revenue systems the traditionally who were having the ownership uh, we can say kind of community ownership only so that ownership has been taken away by the britishers and it has been given to the landlords so when the landlords enter in the scene uh, saath saath along with them the money lenders will also enter that place so because of the exploitative measures uh, they will give loans to uh, tribals at exorbitant rates so when the tribals are not in a position to repay the loans so in lieu of that the money lenders captured the lands so this is the story next is exploitative taxation so the britishers have imposed harsh taxes on the tribals further burdening them right apart from that resource exploitation you know very well this part chota nagpur plateau uh, it is very well known for natural resources especially mineral resources so the british policy is aimed at extracting resources like timber uh, from the tribal lands it has further uh, strained the relations apart from that they have also faced the social injustice right so they have met the discriminatory treatment by the britishers right so this also fueled the discontentment uh, if we see the leaders so <coughs> so there was leadership is provided by several leaders so brother uh, buk bukhan and uh, singh bahan they were the leaders who mobilized the coals uh, in singhbhum district next is jagmohan singh he is a munda chief who participated in the rebellion so basically these three people three, three people they have provided the leadership course of the events 1831 right so the rebellion began with specific or spora, sporadic attacks on tax collectors and money lenders gradually escalating into a wider uprising so i have mentioned the first target of the tribals were the agents of colonial empire only those are the tax collectors and the money lenders right so uh, by 1832 the uh, coals they have started targeting the british outposts and police stations also right so later uh, 1832 the british responded with military force eventually suppressing the uh, rebellion so many coals in this uh, process have been captured and they have killed right so though ultimately it was unsuc- unsuccessful this uh, movement highlighted the plight of the tribals under the british so this rebellion forced the britishers to reevaluate their administrative policies in the region right so subsequent regulation system 
that aim to address some tribal grievances so they subsequently brought in a regulation system to alleviate the uh, i mean problems of the tribal people right so this is about the cool rebellion right next we will study uh, important rebellions first among them is santhal rebellion and uh, another uh, important rebellion is munda rebellion so we are also going to study these two movements along with other movements especially the santhal rebellion and munda rebellion are they are widespread they are large scale uh, because of these two movements the entire colonial mechanism for several months even for years has been disturbed and there were no authority there was no authority of the britishers for several months and for few years that entire authority has been dis disturbed in the areas where this movement has occurred so these movements are very very significant right so the santhal rebellion right so it is also known as santhal hul or santhal hull also we call it h u l or santhal hul h o o l right so it was a major uprising that occurred in 1855 56 against the british east india company right so it happened uh, in the present day jharkhand and west bengal area it is also these tribals are also living in the chota nagpur plateau only chota nagpur plateau only right so roots of the rebellion if you see uh, land alienation so this is there so because uh, the because of the new land revenue policy uh, the zamindari system has uh, uh, the new zamindari system has been imposed and that system zamindari system it disposed the traditional ownership of the tribal santhals and uh, new zamindars have been appointed in that area as the intermediary la landlords between the tribals and the british east india company so you know very well the story of the zamindars they try to exploit as much as possible next is exploitation by money lenders so high interest rates from money lenders burdened the santhals when they were unable to pay the lands have been occupied by the uh, these people right so also disruption of uh, disruption of traditional way of life so british practices and resource extraction disrupted the traditional way of uh, life that is self sufficient forest based way of life this has been disturbed right so the leadership you know the famous uh, leaders brothers sido and kanho sido kanho and murmu these uh, people they have provided the leadership to the santhal rebellion and along with their uh, uh, along with other uh, leaders like chand and bairav they emerged uh, leaders mobilizing the santhals against the british rule and the zamindars right so on june 30 18 uh, june 30 1855 rebellion has erupted uh, santhal warriors have attacked the police stations outpost and the zamindar estates so they aim was their main aim was to drive away this agents of colonial empire the money lenders the tax collectors and the zamindars right so the uh, santhals have displayed a remarkable courage and guerrilla uh, war, war uh, warfare tactics and uh, initially they have surprised the british with their traditional way of fighting only right so they have also captured control of large part of that uh, chota nagpur area so for months even for few years there was no uh, we can say presence of authorities there british authorities there right so when this has happened the british have respond responded with overwhelming force right they have responded with strong military force crushing the rebellion by 1856 right so in this thousands of santhals have been killed in the process right so this is the uh, we can say the course of the uh, uh, santhal rebellion right so however the british had recognized the problem here and it brought in the santhal parganas tenancy act of 1876 so which offered some protection to tribal land rights and was partly a consequence of the rebellion also right 
so in this way the santal rebellion has become a symbol of tribal rebellion or we can say tribal resistance against the british policies right so for the from the exam point of view remember this point uh, the santal Par parganas tenancy act of 1876 so it has partly it is the act has been brought because of the santal rebellion only right next is uh, another important uh, uh, rebellion i was mentioning that is munda rebellion so it is alternatively it is also known as munda ulgulan ulgulan means great revolt or great tumult right so the movement is entirely led by birsa munda right so uh, they were uh, mundas were living in the present day southern region of ranchi so present day jharkhand also so partly it is also comes in the comes in the chota nagpur plateau only so uh, you one thing you have to remember that tribals were well and uh, well associated with the uh, forest regions so you will see all the revolts or rebellions occurring in the forested areas because the tribals were living in the forest forest only so cause of the movement is uh, because it has started the revolt has started because uh, the grievances against the british colonialism local authorities and the christian missionaries so remember in the tribal revolts the christian missionaries have also contributed a lot so because they wanted to preach christianity and they wanted to convert the tribal people into christianity so this also led to a cultural conflict right right so apart from that they have also faced land alienation uh, right so they had the traditional land ownership system that is known as kuntkatti so it was disrupted uh, disrupted by outsiders settling as landlords and uh, they have started seizing the tribal land apart from that exploitation of uh, has also uh, happened so forced labor forced labor and unfair taxes imposed by the colonial authorities and local elites it also burdened the mundas and religious interference so the christian missionary activities they were seen as a threat to their cultural uh, identity and cultural autonomy right so these are the causes so try to remember the specific causes that are associated with each and every rebellion also right so especially the major reason is the traditional land ownership system that is known as kuntkatti that has been disturbed and the second thing is uh, they have been subjected to exploitation by unfair taxes and the interference of money lenders and also exploitation by the local elites by grabbing their labor right these are the important factors leadership leadership is provided by birsa munda he was a charismatic or charismatic tribal leader he emerged as the face of the rebellion right so he preached a revivalist ideology urging mundas to return to their ancestral way of life and establish an independent munda raj so people believed that munda uh, birsa munda has uh, god like powers so he was seen as a messiah by uh, uh, the uh, munda tribe and he they have completely believed in birsa leadership of birsa munda course and events if you see so the uh, rebellion began in 1895 right so he placed proclaimed himself as the prophet and calling called for resistance right so the tribal communities they have targeted churches police stations and the symbols of other symbols of british authority the peak came in late 1899 uh, with attacks and unrest however by 1900 the british suppressed the rebellion birsa munda was captured and he died in prison right so one of the consequences is though the movement is end at the end unsuccessful uh, it was it had a lasting impact so with this movement also in this part for many uh, many months the administration has completely disappeared for a few months right so this movement also highlighted the tribals 
flight of tribals under the colonial rule. Uh, with this, the British has brought in the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act of 1908 and offered some recognition of tribal land rights, partially due to the rebellion's influence only. Right. Apart from that, the Bursa, Birsa Munda, he became the icon of the tribal resistance in India. Right. So try to remember this point also, the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act of 1908. Right. Next is the Koya Rebellion. We will see the uh, Koya Rebellion in two streams. First one happened in the early early 1800s and the second stream of movement has happened during the 1879-1880 time. Right. So who were Koyas? Koyas were an indigenous community inhabiting in the Eastern Ghats mountain regions uh, in the Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and the Chhattisgarh states in India. Right. They have a rich cultural heritage and a traditionally practiced shifting cultivation and a forest based livelihood. Shifting cultivation, it is also known in the Kuya language, Podu language. Right. So it is also known as with different names in different uh, regions. It is basically called as uh, slash and burn cultivation also. From today's standards, it is, a, it is not a sustainable way of agriculture or sustainable way of, uh, we can say, doing agriculture. But at that time, people were practicing this for various reasons. It is also known as Hodu uh, in that areas, the Koya uh, tribal regions. So apart from that, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, called as, the, uh, <coughs> it is a, uh, called as shifting cultivation or slash and burn cultivation also it is known as, right. So why did the Koya rebellion occur? So, so if we see the reasons for uh, Koya rebellion, uh, before that we will see the leadership. So we will see a series of Koya rebellions uh, in the 18, uh, early 1800s and also during the 1879-1880. So apart from that, 1803, 1840 and 1845 uh, also we will see the Koya rebellions. So during the 1879-1880 rebellion, uh, uh, this uprising is led by Tomodora, he is a Koya leader. It erupted against the British, uh, British rule and exploitative money lenders. Right. So this rebellion took place in the eastern Godavari tract of Andhra Pradesh and uh, some regions of Malkangiri in Odisha. Right. If we observe the reasons for this rebellion, uh, same uh, almost the reasons will be same like the uh, reasons for previous revolts like loss of land resources because of the introduction of the Jamindari system and exploitation by money lenders. So the Koya people were often lured into high interest loans by money lenders leading to debt burden, disruption of traditional way of life and oppressive colonial rule. So the Koya people resented the discriminatory treatment and a heavy handed administration under the British rule. So course of the uh, rebellion, if you see, they have resorted to guerrilla warfare. So the Koya warriors familiar with the forest terrain often employed guerrilla tactics and they have conducted surprise attacks on British outposts and the police stations. They have also uh, targeted the symbols of authority that is police stations, tax collections and tax collectors and money lenders. Right. However, the movement has been suppressed by the Britishers and uh, the moon, I mean, many Koya people have died in this, uh, uh, we can say, suppression, right. So this is about the Koya rebellion, right. So another rebellion, uh, somehow this rebellion, Rampa rebellion is also associated, associated with the same region, uh, mostly coastal Andhra region coastal Andhra region. So this Rampa rebellion happened during 1922-24. Uh, so one thing you have to remember that during this time only the non-cooperation movement, non-cooperation movement led by Mahatma Gandhiji, it was on its peak. So that time only the Rampa rebellion was taking place. So it is also alternatively known as 
Manyam Rebellion. Right, that areas, that region where the tribes live, that region is also known as Manyam region, Manyam area. So because of that reason, it is also known as Manyam Rebellion. So it occurred in the Godavari Agency of uh, Madras Presidency. that is present a coastal andhra pradesh so the leadership is provided by alluri sita ramaraju right so he is the icon and the leader leader of the movement so one thing you have to remember is he is not a tribal alluri sita ramaraju is not a tribal person but however he has seen the sufferings of the tribal people in the agency area and he came to the rescue of those tribal people right so basically uh, their entry, i mean style of living was they were harvesting taddy uh, from the palm uh, palm trees so they were uh, harvesting taddy so the british people have imposed on this tax also i mean this activity also collection of or harvesting of taddy so these trees palm trees you can find naturally growing in the uh, we can say wastelands forest lands etc so tribal people were collecting toddy from these trees so the british authorities uh, the agents of british british authority the local uh, administrators the local uh, people who are in authority they have imposed tax on this toddy collection also toddy harvesting and collection also so this aggravated the people of that region tribal people of that region so alluri sitaram raju he was basically not a tribal he was basically not a tribal person but still he has empathized with the struggle of the tribal people and he provided leadership to those people right right he preached a revivalist ideology urging tribals to return to the ancestral way of life and establish an independent munda raj so the reasons for the rebel- rebellion are disposition of the tribal lands exploitation by zamindars and also discontent with the british rule so apart from that the tax rampa tax uh, the, the tax imposed on the harvesting of taddy that is the major reason so course of the rebellion so alluri sitaram raju trained this tribal people in uh, traditional warfare like uh, uh, i mean uh, shooting arrows uh using spears etc so he has trained them in traditional and guerrilla warfare tactics tactics and for a uh, few years they have attacked surprise attacks on police stations government outposts and the zamindari estates right so they used their knowledge of the local terrain to their advantage also they have targeted the symbols of authority like uh, the tax collectors administrative functionaries etc so here also alluri sitaram raju was successful in i mean uh, troubling the britishers for almost 2 to 3 years so in that area the uh, british authorities have dis- disappeared for a couple of years completely however uh, because of we can say uh, because of treachery some of the followers uh, followers of uh, alluri sitaram raju only they have given information about whereabouts of alluri sitaram raju and because of that he was captured and killed in 1924 right so uh, however this movement has forced the britishers to reevaluate some of their uh, police pra- i mean practices and uh, uh, especially related to the way of policing and also issues related to uh, forest management and the tribal rights right so these are some of the important movements which i found are useful from the point of your examination right now we will see some questions which have been asked from this area right first question it is asked in 2020 20 the question is with reference to the history of india ulgulan or the great tumult is the description of which of the following events so the options are 1857 revolt mapilla rebellion of 1921 indigo revolt of uh, 1859 60 so all these are incorrect so mapilla rebellion we will study this comes under the peasant movements indigo revolt it comes under the civilian revolt we will try to study them in the next class uh, the correct option is 
birsa munda's revolt of 1899 1900 so this is the correct option so the munda rebellion of 1899 1900 is called as the uh, ulgulan or it is also alternatively called as munda ulgulan next question uh, it is uh, asked in 2018 question is after the samthal uprising uh, subsided what uh, what was or were the major or measures taken by the colonial government of uh, first uh, point is the territory is called santal parganas was created uh, yes this is a correct statement that ha- measure has been taken second one is it became illegal for santal to transfer land land to a non santal yes this is also correct statement so whatever the act i was mentioning through that act the purchasing of the tribal lands has been made illegal so uh, because uh, what actually was happening the money lenders were giving uh, money uh, uh, lending money to the tribals santals at exorbitant rates when santals were unable to pay repay the loans the in lieu of that uh, loan the money lenders were acquiring the ownership of santal lands so in this way they were capturing the land of the tribal area i mean santhal people so by that particular act it has been made illegal to purchase lands from santhals so if you read this sentence it may not look good but if you see overall it is a very good measure so come what may be a non santhal person cannot purchase land in the santhal region that is a good measure so these two measures have been made after the santhal uprising so the correct option is option c both statement 1 and 2 are correct all right so in this way you can expect to questions from the movements uh, tribal uprisings that's all try uh, tomorrow we will try to study civilian and peasant uprisings uh, okay all right thank you uh, this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time until then have a good day see you next time Thank you.